part of the Press Play Podcast Network. All right, here we are, episode two of the Fanfare Podcast, brought to you by JD. What's the name the of your side bargain hustle? Bargain Bachelors. Find us on eBay. The Bargain Bachelors. Uh, incredible stuff. Check it out, Bargain Bachelors. We're here with a very special guest, Jonathan Tyler Patrick, host of the Krypton Report, right here on the Press Play Podcast Network. Ty, hey, what's up, man? Thanks for having me. I'm excited to talk about, you know, movies, which I love movies. <laughs> All right, so uh, you were one of the... Uh, People that whenever we were launching this, I knew I knew how to get involved. You love movies. You're wearing your shirt that says I speak fluent I movie quotes. And um, I said, Ty, our, our director, Nolan's releasing a movie, Oppenheimer, and we have to do a Nolan movie in, in like commemoration of this huge movie. And you immediately texted back like, we got to do the prestige. And I was like, <laughs> Tyler, why the prestige? <laughs> why of all the movies of all of his movies? Um, so we all have watched. We're here. Uh, you know, JD's with us again. Um, we're, we watched the prestige and we're going to talk about it. But first, before we do, um, Ty, why did you respond with the prestige and in, in this Nolan and this Nolan S my favorite Nolan episode. movie. It's it's it still uses his uh like time compression and alternate timeline tricks that he used during Memento and following. Um, <clears throat> I think it's just a beautifully shot film, like with the time period, the mm-hmm. acting. And this is kind of before Nolan was Nolan. This is the last movie before he's Christopher Nolan, the director of The Dark Knight. You know, because if you go back. Uh, Memento was a good movie. It was small. Um, it was one of those like it was not the big Hollywood blockbuster. Um, Insomnia. Everyone forgets that thing exists. And then you get I to, totally forgot existed. You get to Batman Begins, which was a great movie. Um, but it did not have this. You know, it was it was a building film. You know, he did a great job with that movie. But then you had this, and then you have The Dark Knight. And the Dark Knights, when his name went here, and people worked backwards through his filmography. So, yeah. Well, we'll talk about that. I, I can't wait uh, for JD's breakdown of the Prestige. I, I do want to say at the jump, we are going to be talking about spoilers of the Prestige. And if you haven't seen the movie, stop listening to this episode and, and go watch it because it will bend your mind, as most of Christopher Nolan's movies do. Um and uh, and so, yeah, just wanted to say spoilers when we're talking about the prestige. JD, what is the, the prestige, prestige about? It's a psychological thriller that was based on a novel of the same name by Christopher Priest. The film was directed by Christopher Nolan, who, along with his brother, Jonathan Nolan, also wrote the screenplay. The film stars Hugh Jackman and Christian Bale, who serve as dual protagonists. Other cast members include Scarlett Johansson, Michael Caine, Piper Parabo, Andy Serkis, Rebecca Hall and David Bowie. It was produced by Emma Th- Emma Thomas, Aaron Ryder, and Christopher Nolan, distributed by Buena Vista Pictures, and made its theatrical debut on October 20, 2006. It was received positively by critics, garnering $109 million in the box office worldwide against a $40 million budget. The film was nominated for two Academy Awards for Best Cinematography and Best Art Direction. Today, the film maintains a score of 76% on Rotten Tomatoes, and an 8.5 rating on IMDb. The film is set in in 1890s in London. Robert Angier, played by Hugh Jackman, his wife Julia McCullough, played by Piper Prabo, and Alfred Borden, played by Christian Bale, are friends and assistants of a magician. When Julia is accidentally killed during a performance, Robert blames Alfred for her death, and the two become bitter enemies. Both become famous yet rival magicians, sabotaging the performance of one another on stage. After Borden performs a successful and unique trick called the transported man, Robert becomes obsessed trying to disclose the secret of his competitor with both tragic and disturbing consequences. Beautiful. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. JD, what's your relationship with this movie? When in, do you remember when you I first saw, saw this it? movie in theaters when it first came out and mm-hmm. I walked mm-hmm. out of it wondering what in the hell I had just watched and <laughs> I had to watch it 
I want to say two more times in theaters. And after coming out that second time, I had the exact same thought, what did I just watch? And I think this was one of the first, this is one of the first uh, DVDs I bought. I don't even think, I don't know, Blu-rays wasn't a thing back then, but this is one of the first DVDs I bought because I didn't understand the movie. And this is one of the first movies I watched that I didn't understand what was happening. And I think it took like four or five times watching this movie to actually get it. Yes. It, that seems to be Christopher Nolan's like calling card, right? A lot of his movies are, they're not linear. They're not chronological and they, they, they mess with time and they mess with how time is presented and what information is given to you when, uh, Ty, what is your relationship? Um, first with the of all, movie? <clears throat> I just want to point out when this movie was released, we were all knew each other. We had all just kind of met around that time. Because I actually went, I remember leaving the school true. and drove to Lancaster uh, with some students, some friends, and saw it there at the Regal Cinema there in Lancaster. Um, and I went opening weekend. I was intrigued. First of all, um, being liking Batman Begins, um, but also just the cast with yep. Hugh Jackman. Like, who doesn't like Hugh Jackman? Um, Christian Bale and everything. And just the the movie, I remember the trailer gave you such a, a presence of you they talk about he's a real magician it's real ma-. so i was like okay what is this um and i have a thing for time like period pieces when you know there's that maybe a supernatural element to it um so i went i remember watching it and i understood it but there's a lot of little details upon multiple uh viewings that you pick up little quick dialogue little pieces uh more and more that every time I watch it, I get more out of it. So I had I had the just of, okay, it's, there's like, there's one scene in particular that tells you what the whole movie is if you're paying attention. There's two, there's two key parts in the movie that basically question, and if you piece them together, you've already figured it out the whole time. Um, but they're so quick and you don't realize that they're actually telling you what it is. So... Well, so what are those scenes? I mean, we jump in as tell us. Tell us. I mean, the first line is like, "Are you watching closely?" And then when they do the trick with the bird, and they crush the bird, and the little boy says, "But what about its brother?" And right there's the whole setup of what the whole movie is. And the part that got me was the knot tying when he was on stage and he was tying the knots around her hand. He looked really, really confused. And it wasn't until I watched this movie again a couple days ago to get ready for this podcast that I understood exactly what that meant. Okay, so continue. It was the twin who was tying that knot. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's why he doesn't know. That's why he doesn't remember because he didn't tie it. Yeah, because every time Hugh Jack, when Hugh Jack is questioning him, he's questioning the other one. Now, did you guys realize that Christian Bale plays, technically plays two slash three characters, right? The thing that I didn't realize while I was doing some rewatching and some research is he plays Albert and Frederick, who then take on the stage name of Alfred. Okay. Say so, that. The, so, the okay. Twin brothers, so, people who. Okay, because they're committed to this yes. one life. There are twin brothers in the they, movie. That so is a real the thing. The name that they go identical twin brothers. Instead of identical using twin their brothers. Name, their names, they combine their names to create the one singular person while the other one plays Fallon. Okay. So Alf, Albert and Frederick create Alfred as their combined okay. identity. Alfred Pennyworth. <laughs> so it Alfred is all Gordon connected. <laughs> is the combined identity of the two brothers living in one life. And then, of course, when the other brother is not playing, he's Fallon. All right. So obviously this movie uh, brings rewards and, re- and revelations upon rewatches and rewatches and rewatches. And J.D., you hit on that. Ty, you hit on that. And that's because throughout the movie, we are toyed with what is true and what is not true. We are toyed with 
what works and what doesn't work. We, um, at one part of the movie are from the perspective of Hugh Jackman's character, um, Angier or the great Dantone or Lord Caldsworth or Caldlow or whatever it is. It sounds like they're being gagged as he says it last. <laughs> um, but then another part of the movie were were from the perspective of Christian Bale's twin brothers and 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 their characters. But what's unique is when we're in those perspectives, they're reading the journal of the other magician. And here is what's crazy. The other magician wrote those journals knowing that those characters in the movie are going to find the journals. And so at the very end, you realize, oh, this can't even be trusted because who knows what they were writing just just to mess with them. So I I think to help us discuss this movie, um, just some common questions that we can discuss and just to make sure we're all on the same page that people might have if they watch The Prestige. Maybe you only watched it once. Maybe they watched it and then they listened to this show. Um, so uh, th- let's talk about the twin brothers yeah. first. Can we talk about the okay. twin brothers first? So first thing, all right. Alfred, what Ty mentioned earlier, like, are you paying attention? I was not paying attention yeah. because had I been paying attention, I would have known that that guy was way more than what he appeared to be. And so when mm-hmm. in that scene where Hugh Jackman is like, oh, he's buried down there and he's like so frantic. I'm like, he cares an awful lot about this guy who is just like so random. I'm like, let him go get a new one. <laughs> yeah. I want to come back to that whole buried one of them underground. Like, we, we got to talk about that because there were some things that could have like that movie could have ended right there. Um, it seems like they just talked through the coffin because they're like, he's not talking much. So they didn't like take him out and like punched him and roughed him up and like, oh, he's wearing stuff like take him out of the coffin. If you go right. that far, like you got you to do something <laughs> if he's not talking, like do more than just be like, well, he's not talking better. Bury him alive. <laughs> rough them up a little bit anyway um so, so some common questions because that's a question jd um who was buried alive borden or fallon so, i think the first part is how i have to just to describe them is you have to assign them a name okay because you got them they're shifting around well instead of assigning them names can we assign them um like what well, they I do mean, I always look at it as one's the good brother and one's more of the hothead bad brother. So, okay. Yes. With that, the good brother is the one who fell in yes. love with Sarah and had a kid with Sarah. And the hothead is the one who fell in love with Scarlett Johansson's character. And that's why when Sarah says, you don't mean it today, that is the one who's in love with Scarlett Johansson. And all you do mean it today is the one who's in love with her, like the family yes. man or whatever. So yeah. do you think she figures it out? Yes. She she does. That's why she hangs herself. Because she says later, like, I know who you are. I know what you are. Do you think that's what she was trying to I, tell Scarlett I, Johansson? When she was telling Scarlett Johansson, maybe. But I know, like, her realizing what the brothers were doing is what led to her demise. How did she figure it out? Yeah, I, I didn't... S- I thought she always knew. No, that's, I mean, that's the trick is it's such a secret and so close to them that not even the the woman that they are married to, no, they can tell. I don't so, think she knew. I think she was just so conflicted because she couldn't, she couldn't pick up on something. Like she knew something was wrong, but she couldn't figure it out. I always took it that she figured it out when she says, I know what you are, not who you are, but what you are. A liar. So... I always took it that she yeah. figured out, you know, and that's, but it's, yeah. it's vague enough for us to debate, but also not to give away if you're watching the movie. Right. So this, okay. So who, who was buried alive, Borden or Fallon? The bad uh, brother. I, I think the, the one who fell in love with the assistant Scarlett Johansson, because brother. when he was saved, they went out to that restaurant and he was like, so like, like, he didn't care. He was flaunting everything because he was alive. I say the bad brother. I, I'm using just good and bad because it's a little easier than long explanations. But because I feel like if it was the good brother that was buried, uh, 
the bad brother would have beat the crap out of Hugh Jackman. Cared more about Sarah. He would have beat the crap out of him when he found out like that he was buried. Like he would have got him out, but he probably would have beat the crap out of Hugh Jackman. But it's weird because after that show, he whispers in his brother's ear, I'm walking tonight. Like I'm not we're not going to switch. I'm walking tonight. And it seemed like they were yeah, supposed they to. Probably were. I don't know. Um, it's okay. difficult. I mean, so it's hard to tell if, almost unless you're watching the movie and saying it's this one, it's that one, it's this one, it's that one. Because we only have one scene with them together. Well, so which one do you think got their finger shot off in the very beginning of the movie? JD, if, if you think the one who um, fell in love with Scarlett Johansson was the. No, I think, I think the good <laughs> brother, brother is the one who chopped his hand, his fingers off. Yes, and was convinced by the one who loves yeah. Scarlett Johansson. Be- be- yes, because he could be persuaded by what she said, right? right? Like, hey, you got to commit. You got to they got to do all this. I mean, I Ty, mean, do you agree with that? I, yeah, I just say, like, if you look at it, I feel like the good brother. Um, He's the tragic figure. The other brother is like the little bits you get is persona of like a little bit more harder edge, though. You know, he loves Scarlett Johansson and everything. But he lives his life differently when, you know, because even then you don't. He doesn't try to per, like keep his brother's relationship healthy when he's playing the role. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He, yeah, he does not care at all. So that's why, like, I contrast mm-hmm. them as like I think one brother has more compassion in him than the other brother, and I think yeah. it's the good brother that dies at the end. No, oh, I disagree I with that wholeheartedly. That dies. You think it's the bad one that dies? Yeah, man, it's the bad one. He apologized yeah, what happened to Sarah. He apologized what happened to his he wife. Goes and like sees his daughter. Like he is genuinely happy to see his daughter again. But see, that's the thing too. Also, How do they so, know who okay. his daughter really is? That's you. You know, they 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 took the term Eskimo <laughs> brothers. So <laughs> I mean, the whole the whole line of the, of the film is the fact that suddenly it's two men living one life. Yeah, they were tunnel buddies, and they just did not care. Like, so, I mean, that's the thing is you don't – they're twins. Tunnel buddies. <laughs> so you don't know. And I think yeah. it's left vague so, enough that you, so, one – I think one truly loved her like a daughter, and the other just cared for her enough. No. I'm, I'm about to I'm about to lay, lay the smack down here on you, Ty. Here's why, the in your words, the bad one was the one who was hung. Not only did he, like, sincerely say, I'm sorry for what happened to Sarah, because he knew that the one living was the one that loved her, but at the very end – the brother who was living when he goes to see uh, Lord Carwall, right? And um, and he shoots him. Uh, that that scene is so important, Ty. Because and I wrote down some words here. Um, uh, 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 um, it's his turn. How do you spell that? Uh, uh, <laughs> I get what you're saying. I don't know. Well, um, Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman is like talks about sacrifice, the price of a good trick. Um, he's like, I do it. It took courage. Um, and then he says, look where you are. And then Bale's character says, I don't care. And he wanted him to look around to see all these other bodies. Um, and he didn't care. He just walked away because one of the themes of this yes. movie is obsession is, uh, is obsession that uh, obsession will lead you to ruin. It's a young man's game. It destroys, uh, Hugh Jackman's character. And it destroys the one who cared about the trick. He screamed at Scott Johansson, like what's beneath the, the floor. Right. He had to know the other one's like, dude, just let it go. Just let it go. And he's like, OK, I will. But then he didn't. And he's the one who was obsessed and had to know what it was like. And he's the one that fell into, uh, I almost said, um, Hugh Grant, Hugh, Hugh Jackman's trap. And he's the one who was in jail. Yes. And he's the one yes. who it's, the bad, it's, it's okay. the bad one. All right. I'll go with it because he was obsessive. He wouldn't yes. he wouldn't let anything go. And his brother told him, just let it go. Let's yep. Just live our life. This is not mm-hmm. important. Because he cares yeah. more about, you know, Sarah than he does the magic. Mm-hmm. His, that brother was like, no, nope, I got to figure it out. It does make more sense because then you have the the good brother who basically is ends up with the turn of basically killing Hugh Jackman and everything like in that scene. Yeah. Um, yeah. Whew. But also the other the other thing I would say um, is the uh, the Asian guy with the fishbowl. That's a, that's yes. another uh, yes. foreshadowing to the fact that somebody lives with the trick. It's not just once the stage show's over, it's done. Yes. They live yeah. 
with this, that that is. They were committed. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Michael Caine's character has an interesting part of the movie. Um, In all of Nolan's movies, he's essentially the same character. Um, Obi Wan Kenobi. They're, they're all we're all in Michael Caine's universe. It, it's not the Nolan verse; it's the Michael Caine verse. Is kind of what <laughs> Nolan's trying to do. Um, but but he tells Hugh Jackman's character from the from the jump. It's like, hey, he uses the double. It's not that. It's not that. Like, like you're making it more than it is. It, it's he's, he's using the, a that's double. The obsession part is because he can't believe that it's that simple. Mm-hmm. That that's all it is. Like once you know the trick, it's so simple. Right. And even Scarlett Johansson's character is like, he uses a double. Like, you don't yeah. understand. Like, use it. He just, it, it, it was too easy the for him. Um, but of them living with it. He, he leads uh, Borden or Fallon, whichever one, Borden, to Hugh Jackman in that creepy theater. Right. He's the one they give like a nod. Yeah. Right. Um, and so I, I, I think he knows. I think he knows. He has to. Know. I think he knows too. That hey, because he was like, "You have his daughter. What are you doing here?" I think him seeing that he that Hugh Jackman was Lord Lol Lo, or whatever, Lord and that he has like, <laughs> right, that he has Bale's daughter. He was like, "Yo, this is like I've got to step in and stop this forever." So I'm gonna just make sure that one this machine whatever and then takes bail to him to finish it so here's another question does the machine actually work I mean, the machine's a clone machine what so you you think the machine I clones mean, how else do you explain all the dead bodies it totally works i think they're wacky because the whole that's, no! the that's the that's the whole point like so it's it's trick. it's this is tesla's all fake. none of tesla's this is science. real like you gotta look at who tesla was like it cool. because that's why he that's why he gets arrested is for the murder of Angel Angier. And if you don't yeah. have a body, you don't have a murder. Because all they the had... only person who saw Angier drowned was but then Borden. how did he get but no one else was down there to see it? It was just a body. For. So who's the body on the a flag? dead body? But it's then not but, a real but, body. But then none of that is real. Fake, so he would be free to go. He wouldn't have been held and tried for murder. It came out of the none box of that is he real. Looked at it and talked, and he shot it. That is from uh, that because I went back and watched. That is um, Bale reading the the, the journal of Angier. Okay, so when you're saying that, when why does he go to jail then? Because they think it's a real body. Even back then, they would have like got the body out, and you know they would have been like, "Oh, this is wax," or. Why was it moving? He yelled. It wasn't moving. That's it... why he was trying to break him out. Remember, he's like, "I'll get you out," and he goes to like to get him out, and then he drowns. Because because no, from I that don't think moment, it works. I think they're all wax bodies. On, Angier stops the trick, and even Michael Caine thinks he's dead, because that's why when he because Michael Caine didn't know that Lord Caldwell, because there's a line earlier between. Hugh Jackman and his wife about not using his family name. Mm-hmm. His family's ashamed of what he's doing. Right. So he was always Lord Codlow. Yeah. He was always rich. Correct. So he took Correct. on Angier, but then he used the uh, his stage yeah. name, the great Dantone, because that's what his wife had suggested. Um. Correct. Yeah. He didn't dumb. like it. But you know, he thinks <laughs> yeah, uh, Michael Caine <laughs> thinks he's dead too. That's why he's even more angry when he meets the Lord at the end. It's because he realizes yeah. that Angier faked his death, but he really did die in a sense. Because um, part of it is who goes in the box and who comes out on stage. That's one of the themes. So what I think happened is the real, the original Angier comes out and then the double shoots him. And so from then on, you know, Angier or Lord Farquaad or whatever is just a new person every time. See, that's what I'm. Th- that's what I was thinking. Like Hugh Listen, Jackman, the original Hugh Jackman. No, guys, like, yeah, no. the machine just, worked. Get over it. It's is because that's the whole point of Tesla. Like, it's that mystique about Tesla's magic. Because then, if not, like you're saying that. So he are dies those hats from- wax? Is that a is that a wax cat? Yes, Tesla was in on the whole yeah. thing. 
So not only after he's buried alive, or is he celebrating life, but he gave him this like fake, like word on this wild goose chase to spend a ton of money and to waste his life. It's all fake. They tell you, or you're watching closely. It's all fake. None of this is okay. real. All right. If I'm gonna go with you that none of it's real. Okay. So how did he perform the trick over and over with fake bodies? So how, how did the trick work? That is real. Know. That's it. We're not supposed to know because at the end, he's like, I don't care. I don't care how you did it. You know I ma- don't care. You're obsessed you know over how mad. he does it. It doesn't work. The whole thing, the hundred shows was all to get in, uh, is all to get Borden in jail. That's all he cared about. That's all you he cared about. Mad is this movie is not streaming. So I could just pull it up right here and watch it on my second monitor while we talk. I have it. Like, Yo, I have the Blu-ray, but I'm just like, this is the first Blu-ray a DVD I put in in, in years, and it was an experience. I forgot oh, how dude, to fast forward all watch. like the like Blu-ray like previews, and I wasted like twenty minutes trying to press all these buttons, and all of a sudden it's like blah 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 I, blah. So yeah, mm, none of this is real. Are I'm you watching watch closely? It. Nolan just prestige See, no, you, but that's okay. Let me let me jump to another. Yeah, let me ask you something. Real. Since you're saying this about Nolan, let's jump to something else real quick. What was Leonardo DiCaprio's totem in Inception? No, it's it's Shutter no, Island. In it's Shutter Island. You're talking about Nolan's tricks, right? No, the spinning not. top. The spinning That's top. That's his wife's totem. That's what you forget the whole time. His totem, his wedding. So ring. his totems, and the evidence is all oh, throughout yeah. the movie. And that's another one of those things. No, Michael Caine asked Nolan. He's like, "I'm not going to do another movie unless you tell me what's real." And he's like, "Any any scene you're in in the, in the Inception is, is, real, is real, but his totem was not his. His was his wedding ring. His wife's was the spinning." Wait, so what? What are you saying? Go How does that correlate with this? Is because Nolan wants to me. keep us talking like this. That's the that's the trick. Sure. Is we're going to debate? Like we could literally stop this podcast now, go watch it all together in the same room, no. and still come back and be arguing because. Look, all he wanted to do was prove to Bale's character that he's a better musician, a, a better magician. See, That's all he cared about. And whenever he realized that he got duped at Tesla, he didn't have anything else but to double down. And so he's like, I'm just going to make this work. I, I don't know how he did it, but none of that is real. Those are all wax bodies. Even having them wheel all of those like water things, like Bale's character goes and watches and they all take him to that creepy theater. I don't even think that's the theater that they do all the hundred shows in. They do that last show at that theater where all of those bodies are, all just for that that moment to to, to get Bale's character in jail. That's all he cares about. So you think that's a bunch of wax bodies? You ever put wax? Yes. In water? Yeah. No, have you? <laughs> Does it become white no, and it deathly dissolves over time? See, all he needed was a hundred shows why, worth. This hey, look, I don't know. All I know is a body on the slab. There's a this body is, on a slab. This Kane is why it's my it. favorite Christopher Nolan movie. Is because we're going to keep talking about it, well, and keep dissecting it, and trying to discern and argue like perspective. Because I do get what you say more so about the unreliable narrators of the fact that they are reading each other's journal with the knowledge that the other person may read the journal. So they're going to. He's trying to get Bale to think that it actually oh. worked. Hmm. Um. So, uh, one of the reasons why Hugh Jackman's character didn't like using a double because he didn't get to experience the the yeah. prestige. Like when he he didn't get to experience. What was the other guy's name? Um. You know, the guy who was played by Hugh Jackman know. with oh a little gosh. bit of prosthetics on to come out <laughs> when he did the trick. No, the guy he. No, no, like the drunk Hugh Jackman. Oh Oh my gosh. Oh. That drunk dude. You know what's another scene? I don't remember. What's the opening scene of the movie? All the hats. All the hats. Then it says, Are you watching closely? All the hats are all the doubles where they're testing the machine. All the hats are fake, they're all different. (laughs) I don't think the machine works. So it's either a science fiction movie or it's a it's magician movie. Are science fiction. Magicians aren't real. Science fiction. <laughs> this is a this is a movie. So it's it a science fiction a movie. It was a clone. The clone died. 
50 times. Chase, why don't you just reach out to, to Jonathan Nolan, okay? JD just looked up the real script. He had to see what was going on. Is that what you just read? No, I'm telling you what happened. I'm looking at my notes. That was a clone. Just get Jonathan Nolan on here, Chase. Come on. I don't think that... I think that's an unreliable like flashback just, scene that we're watching. What? I'm just going to agree to disagree because we can just keep going in circles and that's not helping anybody. All, wait, all, all in favor. Who all the it's prestige. Real, raise your hand. Oh, outvoted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's all right. It's all right. Um, obsession is, is one of the main themes of this movie. Obsession lead to destruction. Um, gosh. Do you believe the notion that mastery requires 100% commitment to that craft? I mean, yes, but at the same time, it doesn't mean 100% commitment in the sense of denying everything in life and destroying everything else. Like It doesn't mean chopping your fingers off to I mean, commit to something. It doesn't mean a, like obsession. I mean, it's kind of that debate about actors... And then you have method actors who just go who use acting as an excuse to do absurdly crazy things as they get into character. Um, and I think you can be a hundred percent committed also, to something. Yeah. Sacrifice. That's what Angie talks about the entire time. Sacrifice. Yeah. He is sacrificing himself again and again and again for this trick. And to and all extent, in his journal. Extent, in that his he journal is to killing himself again and again. In his journal. That's to the journal that we know he's going to give to Borden. Watch it again, Tyler. Watch, watch it again. again. And that's what I'm saying. Watch it again. Is 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 it possible that this could not work? And the answer is yes. <laughs> Tesla tells him it doesn't work. And he's like, no, what blah, 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 blah. He's like, well, gosh, if this guy is gonna like once we gotta I it, it doesn't work. It mm. doesn't work. What is your evidence? He's going off the unreliable narrator. And it fits the theme of obsession. Leads to just like it, see, it, I like the idea of like this the sacrifice. The is you have the idea that to wake the trick work, Hugh Jackman has to basically kill himself over and over. That's his sacrifice. But to right. make Borden's trick work, one brother has to be denied life. You know what I'm saying? They, yeah. they, they, they only live half a life. Um, so they're yeah. both, you know, there's a constant sacrifice that we're getting from Borden that you don't even know that is actually happening. Yeah. Um, so you, be, you want, we're using the bird trick metaphor, right? Where there's like, he's like, I don't want to do it if the bird dies. It's like, we got to get your hands dirty. Um, and Michael Caine creates a, trick that kills that saves the bird right but really the the, the bird always dies and so did huge because you can't 50 times <laughs> he did because he got shot and then burned uh, burned alive i don't know um i don't know i don't think it works i think it's all a big ruse to try to get him in jail to Prove to him and only him, audience of one, that okay, he's a better okay. magician. Assume, let's go with that assumption that the whole purpose of this was okay. to get him in jail. What then is the purpose of going back to the theater to see the dead bodies? What is the purpose of Borden going back to the Why theater? Does he want him to look at all these dead bodies. Because he wants him to think that he actually cloned himself. But he's in jail. He did. He, and, and Bale's like, I don't care. I don't care. But that, but that, he didn't even know he was coming. Because he's in jail, dying, being hung. Yeah. He did not know that Borden was going to walk in there behind him. So why yeah. have this room full of wax bodies that no one's ever going to see? Why not melt them down immediately? Mm. Cover your tracks so that you're dead. That's a good point. 
Well, because he's getting stuff from Michael Caine's character, right? What do you mean by that? Yeah. Michael Caine and him are having a conversation there first. And then he leaves and like nods to like Fallon. And then they're down there. I don't remember why Michael Caine and he was down there, but th- that's a good point. Yeah, Michael Caine never goes down there. He just tells him he wants to get rid of that machine or box or whatever contraption it is. Oh, no, because that's where everything's being yeah, stored. Yeah. Like, it's like his, like, he, he buys all the stuff and he's storing it there. And he was making, he was like giving it to Lord Codlow. Like, that's where all of it's being stored. And so he's like meeting him there. He's leaving. And then, like, Fallon walks in. He's like, wait, what are you doing here? And those wax bodies are all there with the rest of his magic tricks. Like, that's where all of his, like, magic stuff that's where is. all his dead bodies are. Because if they're, all of his magic okay, if, stuff. He's keeping it with wax, all of his like top hats and magic wands. Down, why keep them in tanks? Yeah, because the wax, like after a while, the water would make the wax start to like come apart. There you go with this like water and wax thing. I didn't know you're. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you've never had a romantic bath. Okay. I was going to say. Can- that candle is lights also around true. the tub. I need to. Wax, okay. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Jason's going to go yeah. take a bath he, after this. Put it's a not candle like he's be like, what's happening? Yeah. I I don't know. I don't, I don't even know if Nolan <laughs> knows. I really think it's, <laughs> he, it's the idea of, are you watching closely? What do you think's happening? Your interpretation. I will say that it's been a while since um, I've analyzed the book and the book is not as good as the movie. The book goes more into a supernatural realm. There's some, things in it that um they actually elevate the material and made it much better so anyone who's enjoyed the film i do not recommend the book i think the movie is about uh, sacrifice. so again about who is sacrificing the most angier is sacrificing himself by killing these little clones again and again and again borden sacrificing jackson's character his brother yeah. But I think the point with yeah. the clones is is and and his fingers. fingers. Like you said, it's the original dies every time and it's the copy that lives. So it's not like it's the original killing copies. It's the original dies, copy lives. That copy then makes a copy, it dies. So it's like the idea is the new one is always the one that goes on. So would the clone have the leg limp? Hmm. Because Lord Claudelaw has the cane leg limp hardcore at, at the like magic storage area at the end of the movie. Question. I mean, I would assume it was like a direct clone. So clone for I, mean, I don't know how clones work. Too. So I mean, I don't know how cloning works. But if a clone was in wax and water, you would know how it works. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. The other thing is, there, I, don't I would know. say like um, there's nothing in the movie that would leads you to think that it's wax like if we had a scene of like melting candles or making wax statues or that was part of a trick somewhere along the lines then i think you would have evidence to be like this is what they did but there's nothing that says it all um there's nothing that would allude to well what is that body you know you're saying wax statue because it makes sense but there's nothing in the film that backs up the concept of creating wax figures you're right it's a dead bird it's its brother, which yeah. is a you know, a it gives bird. away the owl. So you don't think that Nolan's trying to trick you guys as moviegoers? You think you're accepting all this at face value? You're accepting a movie about magic trick and obsession and I like, mean I think there's there... not seeing what's underneath. You're accepting this all at face value. That oh yeah, it's a Tesla machine that clones Hugh Jackman. You're accepting that. I I just want to. I just want to I mean, ask. It's the most logical assumption. I don't yeah. know where in the, I don't know mm. where you got wax figurines from. This is not the house <laughs> of wax. I don't know how you got there. <laughs> how did you get to wax? I don't know how else he would ha- like make a hundred different bodies of himself or whatever. Where 
where is the wax shows. how like <laughs> where is he getting all this wax from i don't know he's lord caught he has a ton of money i don't know okay. all i know is he's obsessed with this trick and proving to bail that he's a better magician and he knew that bail would be there and he knew that he would go behind like he knew he all knew of that, that. Clone would he knew all of that and that Christian Bale would get blamed for his death because it's an actual dead body. I don't think any pathologist, I don't care what era it is, is going to look at a dead body and say, you know what? That is wax. Because that was the whole point was to set him up for his murder. <laughs> like he goes to like to and test be, his and pulse be killed. And his finger just go through the wax line. <laughs> you know, to be killed. Because of his murder to get him back for kill, basically him bl- killing his wife. It's the and then, ultimate sacrifice. And then Hugh Jackman just slips back into being his lordship, you know, dropping the yeah. Robert Angier persona and letting that die so that Borden, you know, yeah. he had no idea that there would be the brother that would show up and basically come out, come for blood. Yeah. Yeah. I th- I, I respect Tress. Yes, I, I don't respect know. your thoughts, man. Like I'm not. I have my thoughts too. I'm just saying, like you make a valid argument. It's just whittling it down. What? The unreliable narrator. That's what I'm saying. Like using the idea that they're reading from the journals and what we experience is someone writing for someone else to read as an unreliable source. You are being played throughout the movie. You are on a magic trick journey yourself. And it tells you the three acts. There's the, uh, I have. There's the pledge, the turn, and the prestige, and and you are taken as a moviegoer through that entire process. But we want to be fooled. We want the, the clone stuff to work because it looks cool. Me that's what that's what, what the magic me. trick. That's all the it point of a magic there trick. Is no prestige because there is there's a dead body. It's just he's dying. But but think about this. Like we're 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 presenting with the pledge, right? But then the whole movie, we, in a sense, as the moviegoer, are watching the movie through the eyes of Hugh Jackman, in a sense. But then the turn comes. We're watching it through the eyes of Hugh Jackman as Christian Bale's reading Hugh Jackman's experience, so like, reading you know, his journey. We are, we're always wondering, like, what happened to his wife? We're following him. And then we all of a sudden, we realize who Borden is and what he's done and that he's actually two people and their life. And then it's like, where you've been tricked there. And then, you know, Hugh Jackman pulls the trick on us again where he's not dead. So it's, you know, you're, like you said, you're constantly being tricked and set up with things. So we aren't on like the most stable ground the movie's in is from the moment that uh, Christian Bale is like hung. Like from that moment on is the only thing that we can go off of as like, unbiased i can agree with that objective like narration i accept that logic um and from that moment it's i'm going to make a beeline to lord codlow to get to get my daughter back and to kill him and then tell him that i don't care all right hey i don't know the this, prestige, everybody. The prestige is, why, is, is I mean, anyone who watches this movie, you automatically talk 20, 30 minutes because it's so mind boggling. Um, do you like JD? Do you like movies that do this to you? Or do you just want to watch a movie and laugh at exploding explosions and I am, MacGuffins? I mean, this is not, this definitely is not the type of movie that I would like. No, this is not my type of movie. I liked it, but it's not my type of movie. I mean, it's Tyler. I like all flavors. It's just what am I in the mood for? You know, this is not a movie you throw on in the background, yeah. just kind of chill to. It's right. You're going to take your time and watch the film and absorb and immerse yourself in the movie. It's not something I can just put on, you know, and for a first viewing, later viewings are different. But like for a first viewing, like you're not not going to throw this on and then be, you know, kind of doing something to the side. Um, it just kind of depends on the mm. mood, you know, like. Sometimes I want to like use my brain and think and like look for clues like um another Christian Bale movie that recently came out and stuff like um you're in you're intrigued by it 
and you I like mystery, you know. Um, but sometimes I just want something yep. just straight. In in regards to how Christopher Nolan tells a story about time with Memento, with Prestige, uh, with Inception, with Dunkirk, with Tenet, all of those deal with some a different time element. Do you have a favorite one of those five, Tyler? Like of of his the like prestige. toying with time? Because all of those toy like tell a Memento story very differently. I think Memento is really great of just it's it's nonlinear, but you don't hop around as much. You can you can really pick up where you are because you know, um, you watch a scene and it ends, and then later on in the movie, we go back to that end and then move forward. Um yeah. Sorry, interstellar deals with time manipulation, but well, in a different, in a different way. way. It's not so much yeah. in the compression yeah. of the storytelling. Um, Tenet, I am I am not a fan of that movie. I think that was Nolan trying too much to like wow everybody. Um, it was too Nolan. It was too Nolan. Yeah, that's really you know him like <laughs> never go full <laughs> Nolan. He went like, full Nolan. Um, it, you know, it got to the point where it just got blown out of proportion and absurd and trying to figure out what was going on, what the real story. And it was super long. That I just feel like it just it was a cool concept that just went. It just did. It went too far. That it just got. How many like, times did you watch it? Twice. And I was like, and the second time it felt like I was dragging. I was just. I like, watched it three times, and I was like, I can't do this again. I. I, I love. Just, I don't. I, I love just, it. It's. Yeah, JD. Do you have a favorite one of those five or six? It Dunkirk was uh, Memento Prestige. So far, right now, mm-hmm. that's the one I want to go. I need to go re-watch yeah. it again. I enjoyed it, but it just didn't stay with me as much as like that's my favorite usage of telling a yeah. story with time i i love how he does it um and i think it might be his best movie movie it's not my favorite yeah. nolan movie oh, if that it, makes, it totally sense. makes sense um i think it's just easy enough for people to follow and understand but it's just like interesting enough that you're like okay that that might be the um, I don't want to say like quintessential Nolan movie, um, but it's not my favorite Nolan movie. That's yours, JD. Yeah, like his like my favorite time. Movie. What's your least favorite? Mm. I mean, Insomnia. it's got to be Rises, probably. Uh, I don't know. I didn't hate Insomnia. I didn't hate it, but it doesn't. Fe- it doesn't feel like him. No, I, I think it was just way too early. But, I don't even, even consider it a Nolan movie. It's that's that's why it's my least favorite is because like you know he had done following which was his big indie you know and then he did memento then he does insomnia which doesn't even feel like him you know it it feels more like him just doing a picture for a studio compared to like this is a christopher nolan film regardless of what oppenheimer does he's made such an imprint on Hollywood and movie going if anyone messes with time like this they're gonna be like oh they're trying to do a Nolan like he has found a niche and made a mark in this niche and it's original IP it's not like he's making well I mean he was making Batman but it's like these are all original stories these are all like stuff that are it's it's new to a lot of people and i think that's exhilarating and exciting too but if i had to pick a least favorite movie and i don't care how much hate mail i get for this batman begins damn you have to back that you have to back that up right i just i I respect you enough i couldn't get into it i couldn't get into it batman begins is like i think the best batman movie um it's my favorite batman movie there's a pod. There's multiple podcasts about that, JD. If you're interested in hearing t- Tyler's thoughts on Begins, <laughs> I, I like it. I like it a lot. But I like I mean, The Dark Knight. But see, Batman I, Begins. Over yeah. time, I've liked to like. I've enjoyed Begins better for a lot I'd of. Probably, this. I'd probably need to watch it again yeah. for I the think symbolism. I've only seen it once. I was like, okay, this is. Well, see, that's the thing. When I first, the first time I watched it, I watched it at the theater. I was like, okay, and then I bought it just because I watched it, and then over time, I've liked it more and more. I like the psychology element of what they build into his character and what he stands for in the setup. Um, I feel like with the Dark Knight, as much as I love that movie, when we get, by the time we get to the boat scene, 
I could I could almost just cut the entire boat scene out of that movie and be okay. Okay. Like just go from him like going and you know taking on the Joker's goons to the two face scene. Just cut the whole boat thing. That whole tension builder, I feel like just inflates the movie that I don't even need. But that's just me. I love the Dark Knight. Obviously, there's a movie poster right behind me uh, <laughs> of the Dark Knight. Um, maybe one day we can do another Nolan movie. Uh, but we still have to talk more about the Prestige, do a movie report card. But first, we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, JD, Tyler, and I, uh, we give out our final grades for Christopher Nolan's The Prestige. Stick around on the Fanfare Podcast. We'll be right back. Hey, this is JD from the Hyman Podcast, a place to have hard conversations revolving around the overall human experience. We tackle topics such as racism, the American justice system, and even headlighting news such as the Alex Murdoch saga. This season, we're gonna continue to tackle more hard-hitting topics, and I'm excited to take you on that journey. The Hyman Podcast is available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. The Hyman Podcast is produced in conjunction with the Hyman brand and is part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Hey everyone, this is Don Mike Mendoza, the host of Producing While Asian. Join us in season two for more conversations with actors, artists, producers, and more from Broadway, Hollywood, and beyond every other Wednesday on the Press Play Podcast Network. Hello, Brooks here with the Books with Brooks monthly book club podcast. Listen, it is beyond time for you to join a book club. I know you've been thinking about it and everyone's doing it. Here's how Books with Brooks works. We read one book a month and then we talk about it. Classics like Stephen King's The Shining, debut novels like We Are the Brennans by Tracy Lang, and tons of other compelling, life-changing stories one book and one month at a time. So come read along with us. What's up, everyone? Chase Smith here, host of the Chase Smith Podcast. And my podcast reflects who I am. My hobbies, my interests, my passions, my curiosities, my careers, my questions, and my family. I'll spend time talking about all types of sports, movies, TV shows, trending news stories, and other cultural events, and even faith. This is who I am, and I hope I can get to know you as well. Join me on the Chase Smith Podcast, and let's have some thought-provoking conversations only on the Press Play Podcast Network. We are excited to announce that we are joining the Press Play Podcast Network. The Krypton Report podcast is dedicated to all things Superman, Supergirl, and the planet Krypton. We discuss movies, TV, game, comics, and all things DC. So join me. Tyler with my co-host James and Jania. So join us as we explore DC's multiverse. Look for a Krypton report on all social media platforms. We are back on the Fanfare Podcast. JD Hyman, Jonathan Tyler Patch. We're talking about the prestige. What a fun conversation, guys. Fun. I don't know. That was exhilarating. <laughs> that was pretty good stuff. Pretty good stuff. Well, hey, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight categories. Eight classes that we're going to be grading the prestige in, Ty. We simply a, a through F, and then we tally up all of the um, scores at the very end. See what its uh, overall GPA is. Um, first class here is acting. We have here describing this as performance um, with the main characters and the supporting characters. Tyler, you will go first. What grade would you give the prestige in acting? A plus jd i'm gonna go a as well just because you have these characters who are playing multiple characters and you can see the distinguishment of those characters so definitely an a yeah i'm uh i'm gonna go with the b you had to be the outlier i'm gonna go with the b yeah. well i I struggle sometimes with Scarlett See, Johansson's I'm not, character. I'm not. I agree with that, uh, but I'm not counting that. She, because I, I think Sarah, whoever the actress who plays Sarah, oh, what's her uh, name? Um, oh, I have it right Rebecca, here. Uh, Rebecca Hall. Rebecca Hall. Yeah. Yeah. Rebecca Hall. Um, it's it, they shouldn't have 
had her act beside Scarlett Johansson. It was just <laughs> un- un- unfair. I mean, I'll agree with you. I think Scarlett um, Johansson is the weak link of the acting. Um, but I'm looking at the main cast and I'm looking at Christian Bale and Hugh and what they're bringing more so. It was also hard not to see Jackman's character from Greatest Showman. Like but that's retro. This, like this uh, came first. But still, I, I definitely correct. get what you mean by that. You mean, um, anything else you'd be watching Greatest Showman thinking about this? Mm, don't move backwards. I don't know. Uh, Scarlet so may just, have been like the weak link, but you know, Michael Caine, David Bowie, like Andy Serkis, they. Yo, Andy Serkis and David Bowie almost give it an A plus automatically for me. I love, <laughs> they were just I love eating Andy it up Serkis. every single okay, time. Every second, wait a second. Guy. Wait a second. What we didn't talk about was like the Thomas Edison connection. Those were fake. <laughs> all right, I'm not going. To, I'm not going That's down the this. Road. We're just going back to the A plus. <laughs> we're just going back. We're just going back to the report card. There's no way to see. There, there's no way whatsoever to know that those were truly Edison's men. Those were Tesla. That was Tesla and Andy Circus getting out of Dodge because they had milked this guy for all of its worth and he wouldn't stop. And so here we're going to throw a hundred, a hundred hats out while you, out where you walk and an, another cat or whatever. All Nothing right, happens. Right. Let's go back to the green. I give it a B. <laughs> okay, star power. So this is different than acting. Star power goes with like name recognition and previous work. Um, Ty, uh, what do you got for star tough, power? I went uh, B plus. I think, you know, Bale was okay. on the rise really for the main public. You know, um, he is a great actor, but like he wasn't the movie star yet that he would come to be here shortly. Um Hugh Jackman, I think, is the biggest name in it, but we're looking at 2006. You know, Hugh has made a name. He's basically yep. done the X Men films. Earlier that year, he had done X Men mm-hmm. 3, um, which is basically just Wolverine 3 um, before there were Wolverine movies. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, Michael Caine, of course, you know, he's not being promoted heavily. And like I said, this is the last Nolan film before it's a Christopher Nolan film, before like that is said. Um, and has the meaning behind it. So I, I give it at the moment. It's, it's that film of right before the tipping point of everything. So I give it a B plus. I'm going to go JD? B as well for very similar reasons. Um, you know, at the time, these guys, I mean, they had done some good work, but not, you know, enough to like drag you, you know, drag an audience into the theater. And I look at, you know, the box office, um, 109 million is not bad, but I think, you know, had there been bigger star power, you would have seen a lot bigger returns on that. Also, I mean, not to knock them, you know, Piper Parabo, but like next to Hugh Jackman, she was probably like one of the most well known people in that movie at the time. So. Scarjo? I don't know, man. But, Christian but Bale. Scarjo blow uh, up? That was in Iron Man 2. That's yeah, when she, she didn't became blow up the, until much later. Like that's when she became the household name that everyone kept like obsessing over. Is when she got into the MC. She was in a movie. She was in work. Don't get me wrong. A couple, but, of, yeah. But she wasn't Scarjo. She was like Scarlett Johansson, this actor. Oh, I've seen her somewhere. I've seen her somewhere else. Yeah, Lost in Translation. Oh, she was in the island. Who, who was yeah, this? Like, um, and the you know, and let's see, Iron Man. Her Iron Man debut was in what 2010. So that's really when she started to blow up. Yeah, twenty ten. And all Piper had behind her was Cowdy Ugly. So, yeah, <laughs> Michael Caine was probably the most respected actor. Like Hugh Jackman was the biggest movie star. Michael Caine was the most respected actor, and Andy Serkis was underrated actor on the set. Dude, I don't know. I, I think because after this movie, Christian Bale rattled off like three ten to Yuma. Uh, Dark Knight. Um, he's in a Terminator movie. I, I mean, he had, like Terminator movie. This was his tipping point. This is where, this is where. Uh, I don't know. I I gave it an A minus just because Hugh Jackman is the first name on, on uh, top billing. Um, but I think I don't. I think people knew who Christian Bale was. I think Begins was was a big hit. Um, I think. Uh, Michael Caine, obviously David Bowie. Scarlett Johansson. I think it. I think the names helped 
probably Christopher Nolan. Yeah. It's not like Christopher Nolan was Christopher Nolan thing, yet. That Terminator movie almost ruined Christian Bale's career. <laughs> <laughs> um, cannot confirm or deny <laughs> that report. All right. So cinematography, storytelling without words. Ty, I'm curious to hear wh- where I mean, we go here. It's an A. I mean, I think this movie, sometimes like there's certain films I would like to watch just turning the sound off or wish there was an option to turn off the dialogue and just watch the film with the music as it tells the story. Um, And the pictures in this are just, I mean, they're beautiful. Like there's so much care taken for this, the feel of the time period. Um, This was Wally Pfizer, right? This was because he was Nolan's main DP. And if yes. I remember right, this was Wally Pfizer. And that's like who Nolan used all the way yes. through Rises. Um, yep. DP. So, I mean, yeah. the guy does amazing work. Yeah. Yep. So you give it an A. JD, um, what do you got, man? Absolutely. Cinematography. An a. Now, I don't, I'm not a fan of like psych- psychological thrillers, like I've said before, but the way this movie's filmed is just absolutely beautiful. A. I'm going to go A plus because that's all that you know, they had to rely on to tell the story was what are you watching? I mean, that's literally in the tagline. Are you watching closely? You can't tell a story that could that could be taken two or three different ways, right? Without having incredible cinematography that leads you to either one of those ways. We have different interpretations of the movie because of the cinematography, not because it's bad. But because it's yeah. that intricate and intentional. I completely agree with you. Um, so I gave it an A+. Plus. Um, sound design, a. Tyler. Because the sound okay. design reflects on the emotion. It reflects on the time period. Um, it it makes the scenes with the machine feel like it comes alive. Um, and huh. just the sound of... So many little parts in it that just influence the pictures that you're watching. So, JD, what do you got? I'm going to go B minus on this one. As I mentioned in our uh-huh. Indiana Jones episode, the sound design for me is based on what I'm hearing in a in my surround sound system. And the only time I would say that I that there was really you know, some kind of oomph behind it. it was with the Tesla machine and the ending build up, which was really good. But like before that, prior to that, I think it was a little bit weak. Um, so I'm going to go B minus on that. Yeah, I went with the B. I couldn't think of one sound like song from the movie. Like I do remember when the machine was turned on and had that really cool like sound that might have sounded exactly like that. i'm not gonna lie that was pretty good uh, um, but like i can't think of most of his movies have some recognizable like sound interstellar has that awesome theme inception yeah. right dunkirk has like all of them have Is like these sound awesome that that's a different that's i put it all things. as the same um well, I don't speak fluent movie quotes. <laughs> so I, I in our so how what what should we rename the category to include sound and score? I'll just put them separate. We can't have more than eight. Yeah. I would uh, um, okay. Hmm. Noises. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been counting the music. I've only been counting like the sound design. No, we counted the theme music for Indiana Jones. That was different. That was, that was Indiana I Jones. did at least. See, yeah. but that's what I'm talking about. Like, but if we did sound design for Jaws, dun, you better believe the that's theme in there. For Indiana Jones is kind of part of the sound design. It's not just like the score. I'm I'm not gonna split hairs with you because you have a sound designer who that's their job, and then you have a uh, composer that comp- composer. composes the music, and it's just yeah. like anything else. Is like they're gonna work together. Yeah. But your sound design goes much more into depths about your sound effects and how the sound works and like the post process of uh, bringing the sound in and how it fluctuates, um, how you feel the sound. 
compared to the score is like the same kind, yeah. but it's it's your musical. Your sound design comes a lot more from your tactile. Yeah, that's why I think it's based on my surround sound system. So I guess you could just put maybe sound, like audio, auditory, like Okay, we'll do yeah. Audio, sound design, and if score. We score. Yeah, there's nothing from the score that pops for me. Um, so yeah, the score was an F. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> costume design, costume design tied to the Victorian period. Do yeah, do you think for you, man? Yeah. What about you, JD? A, it met and exceeded expectations. It felt lived in. It felt real. It felt yeah. lived in. It didn't feel yeah. like it was. It was total 1980s, like or 1890s. <laughs> it was like in <laughs> Yeah, it was total eight, total 1800s. Yeah. Screenwriting. I give it an A plus because, like I said before, the book they're taking the source material and they elevated it, and they knew what to jettison from the book and what to bring uh, to a film. And sometimes that's a very tough thing to do. Um, do you just adapt the book or do you change it for your medium and change your story? And in some cases you end up changing more and you actually make a better product. So that's why I want the A plus. I'm going to go A plus on this one as well. Um, I really like uh, the, the screenplay in this film. I think it helped to propel the story a lot more. Um, when you combine the screenplay with the visuals and you take into consideration the different ways that the screenplay is incorporated in the movie, you have your narrators, you have the journals. Um, I think this movie kind of like pulled all those different elements together and it really like solidifies the story. So A plus. Yeah, I'm going to go with the A. Um, I I think I just like a little more clarity. Um, tell me, I, Nolan. Tell I, me. I can see. <laughs> yeah, but uh, that's never going to happen. Uh, directing, she got. Is there anything better than an A plus? Like, I mean, no. Y- the time compression, the the narration, none of this would work. Us debating things based on little things that we see in the film, none of that works without a solid directing. I'm going to do JD? A plus on this as well. I'm literally going to like tag on what Ty said. Like the discussions that we've had on this movie are evidenced by the great directing. Yeah. I'm going with a B because it's unnecessarily <laughs> difficult. It is unnecessarily difficult. It's a movie about magicians. Why the heck is it this hard to that's follow and understand? That's the point of the movie. That that's it doesn't need to be that hard. I understand Tenet being hard. Interstellar, you're in space going through Chase, black holes. Even, that makes sense. You even, Dunkirk, that's really cool. Oh, Memento, you have like a, a disorder. Yeah, that makes sense. Why is this so hard? It's so hard because you brought up more of the unreliable narrator that I wasn't even thinking about. So even to that right there, you just proved <laughs> how it is hard. It needs yeah. more skill. Okay, so do a movie about unreliable narration that's not about magicians. Oh See my an god! Unreliable yes. narrator. But that doesn't impact oh. like what you're watching. It's just him. You know, no, I got no, these no, scars. Like, it it, it doesn't impact the, the visual. Like you said, do a oh. movie with. Them. Yeah, the, that joke, dude. I just default to Ledger. <laughs> I'm, man. Just, I'm just saying, a movie with an unreliable narrator that's not doing with magicians. That movie, like, there's yes. parts in that movie we could just say, did, did this even happen? Is this another, you know, just okay. dream of his? Yeah. Is the whole movie a dream? Is nothing real? Like, like this. Like, so, so I, I give it a B because it's unnecessarily difficult. It's just him wanting to do this. Every other movie had a what purpose for it. You got to go uh, back in time Why? for the nuclear bomb stuff. That's that's a because they had to hide the nuclear keys in the past, guys. Okay, we didn't want to accept it. time yeah, travel. Fine. You're going to accept time travel and be able to be inversed and move backwards and shoot a bullet in reverse. I'm not. I'm. I'm accepting inversion. I'm not accepting time travel. <laughs> oh, that's no. different. So the whole movie is 
the one that person so moving different back than the, the prestige. whole movie to the point where the movie starts, and you're going to accept that over a machine that makes a clone or directing. I'm going to accept that m- more than. I'm doing a movie about magicians. What if I make it like, it's almost like it was too easy. So I'm going to make it harder for me. So I'm uh, going to do this. Confused. The movie is even told is chronologically. Movie At least Tenet is, is told the beginning to end. <laughs> it's too hard. It, it's unnecessarily difficult. This movie is unnecessarily difficult Paris to understand. Is in this movie. We, <laughs> was, uh, <laughs> did you stay for the, po- Hey, did you stay for the beans. reservation? <laughs> Chase, did you stay for the post credit scene? And the, yeah, <laughs> Sam Jackson shows up. <laughs> yeah, Shield. It, it's un. Look, it's unnecessarily difficult. He did not need to direct and make this movie this way. I know that sounds really stupid because I I enjoyed it, but it is unnecessarily difficult. I just I believe it's just have a I reason. Think our A's will outweigh his, so <laughs> that's fine. Okay, movie poster. Uh, moving on. I gave it a B. Po- B. I, I don't think the poster was that good. Like I, that. So there's the yeah, DVD cover, good at all. right? Or the, like, I think that's like a C, maybe a D. Yeah, a C for me. It was. Wait, hold on. Uh, what did you give I don't it? Know. I'm I'm dropping as we're going here. Okay, like, <laughs> like the more you yeah. talk, the more I'm like that movie cover. Like if we're going by that. It's because you were influenced by The Illusionist, another movie that came out when this was out. Do you remember, like, there was, like, three magic movies that came out, like, all back-to-back because <laughs> they're all at the same I, uh, time for some everything reason? Everything you like that in Hollywood is cycles. Yeah. Every cover, yeah. like, a poster that I see for this, I give it a C. I just, I don't think it really, like, um, it doesn't really influence what the movie's about. It doesn't make me extremely intrigued about what the actual film is. Um, that... I that disagree. makes me look like two guys fighting over a woman. That reminds me of, of Toothpaste. They did. So. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? It, they did fight over oh, no, a woman. No, it reminds and me of Face Off. That's what it reminds me of. Yeah. Like, it looks like the whole story is <laughs> about these two guys who become obsessed with her. Like, there's another Hugh Jack movie, movie that's like that. And that's what it's about. It doesn't even give the, like, the sense of the time period, the magicians, like, nothing about what the movie actually is. I mean, you can't even see, like, the period clothing. For all we know, because oh, that's part of the whole trick. Sorry, I, I, I digress. Written all over it, and... <laughs> it really yeah, that is true. So wait, you give it a C, uh, JD? What'd you give it? A C. Of I'm gonna give know. it a B plus. Oh Chase, like this movie, this this is the most simple. This communicates more about what he was trying to do than anything the movie ever did. So what we're talking about is this like cover of like it's like Hugh Jackman's face. Uh, Scarlett Johansson's in the middle and, and Christian Bale's face is beside it, but both of their faces are half lit. Um, I think this communicates more about what the movie's trying to like say than anything the movie does. This is the most clear part of the prestige is, is this cover. These guys are rivals. They uh, are eyeing each other up. They're trying to best each other. And ScarJo's in the middle. Like if I saw this movie poster and I didn't know anything about this movie, I would think she was a striptease. Yeah, or like she's murdered, and those are the guys that have to. Like one of them's guilty, and one's investigating it. All right, so here we have. uh, We've crunched the numbers. We've remembered how numbers work. We have our GPAs here. Uh, Tyler, you gave the Prestige a GPA score of three point six two five. That is the same exact score that JD and I gave Indiana Jones in our last episode. JD, me and you came in with the same amount of um, scoring, even though we had different grades, came out to be the same GPA, 3.5. Tyler, are you proud of your 3.625 score? I mean, you know, um, when you look at averages and everything, because I mean... The killer for me on this was uh the poster. Like that poster sucks. So I'm just saying, <laughs> like, it doesn't do anything. You, you want a wax figure and water poster, don't you? You, you want the prestige, the just this case of wax the that's dissolving. Reminds me kind of like the long kiss goodnight poster. That's what it kind of makes me think of. <laughs> if you look that poster up. 
one of them. There's like two of them. But it was like one of the <laughs> posters. But... Dude, if if that poster didn't rank so lowly for you, this would have been like a 3.8, yeah. 3.9. Is, I think is is my favorite Nolan film, and I I think it's his best um, because I think it's before he gets too hot headed. Um, not in a bad way, but just too like you know tenety. No, he got too high headed and went and made tenet. So, <laughs> <laughs> the Prestige is his hot head film. I'm telling you, JD, are you happy with your I three five? Every bit of it. Yeah, I think I think that's fair. I you know I'm not trying to like act like I don't enjoy or like the movie. I enjoyed the movie. It was fun to rewatch. I would rewatch it again. I would watch it with you guys so right now. I. I'd put it in, and I think that would be a ton of fun to watch uh, just fun to together. Do a feature um, this and Inception. I don't. I just feel like those two would be very interesting uh, to watch together. My because I because really I would because <laughs> I'd love to do this conversation on Inception. I would need an Alexa Pro. For yeah. That, so. <laughs> Yeah, I think three five. Um, I think that's high, but I think this is you know I look. I like Christopher Nolan. I like his originality. I like how he tries. Like the effort, even though I think this is too much. I appreciate the effort. Um, you know, I don't really think he mails anything in. Um, and I I love originality and creativity more than um something bland and boring. And you cannot just use those words to describe any of Christopher Nolan's movies. I don't care uh, what, what what you've like. Th- they're not that. They're not that. Um, Ty JD, yeah, this yeah, was so much sure. fun. I think we all watched very closely. <laughs> <laughs> I would say we did. Well, thank you so much for downloading and listening to the Fanfare Podcast. We'd love to hear what you thought about the Prestige. If you find us on Facebook or on uh, Twitter, let us know what you thought. Uh, let us know your grades. We'd love to hear from you. And who knows, maybe we even share that on our next episode. Shouts to the Press Play Podcast. Note for making this possible. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at Press Play Pods. We always follow back. Ty, what's up with the Krypton Report, man? You guys had a um, you know big big summer with yes, some DC did. stuff, uh, dude. We just dropped an episode today that was uh, had a little issues with recording just because we had so many people and different um, computer problems from different people, but it was a fun episode where basically we made our own, we crafted our own justice leagues based on all the different versions that exist in the multiverse. So we took tw- a list of 20 characters nice. and picked our favorite versions uh, we That's would cool. want nice. as a team. And it was fun because some of the characters, you don't realize how many live action versions there have been. And then you never know mm. uh, who someone's going to say. And Solomon, my son, my eight year old son did it with us. And he had some of the best answers that just kind of, uh, he committed, That's he awesome. knew what he wanted and it threw everybody for a loop and it was awesome. That's, that's great. JD, what's up with the Hyman I'm podcast, man? I'm to release an episode tomorrow called the state of yes. the podcast. And it is going to be a very entertaining episode. All right. Make sure to check that out. And, uh, we appreciate you guys for sticking around. Have, uh, have a great time. Our next Fanfare podcast, I'm going to do a movie on uh, a sports movie with the start of the NFL and NBA season, but who knows what will come up uh, next in the Fanfare podcast. Thank you guys so much. See ya.